The Carolina Hurricanes entered their fifth season in Carolina since relocating from Hartford in 1997, and this was the first year the Canes had ever made it past the first round in the playoffs. The team had a good mix of veterans with valuable experience alongside some young up-and-coming NHL players. Let's get into how this team has built up, how they did during the regular season and playoff-wise, and what this team drafted in the offseason to potentially work on to continue building this team up. The Hurricanes were going into their fifth consecutive season with Paul Maurice as head coach who had also coached Hartford in their final two seasons. As previously mentioned, this was the first year the Canes got out of the first round of the playoffs. More on that in our postseason performance segment. Let's get into a breakdown of the roster. In terms of forwards, they were led mainly by the likes of 38-year-old Ron Francis, 28-year-old Sammy Kapanen, 25-year-old Jeff O'Neill, and 31-year-old Rod Brindamore. Francis, who captained the team, would put up 27 goals and 50 assists for 77 points in 80 games in his 20th NHL season. Meanwhile, Sammy Kapanen would have his career best season with 27 goals and 69 points. Jeff O'Neill would provide 30 31 goals and 64 points, while Broad Brindamore, who came in from Philadelphia two years prior, would have 55 points through 81 games. The rest of the remaining 11 forwards would total 168 points, so most of the offense came from the four guys previously mentioned. The defensive side of things were primarily defensively minded, however, there was a little bit of offense from the back end. Sean Hill, who had previously had spent time in Carolina from 1997-98 to 99-2000, was reacquired from the St. Louis Blues for a fourth round pick in 2002, and defender Stephen and Hulko. Hill helped out with the offense putting up 30 points in 49 games with Carolina despite only having 3 points in 23 games with the Blues that season. Aside from that, the Hurricanes had shootout legend Merrick Malik who had 23 points, a couple peer veteran defenders in Glenn Wesley, Aaron Ward, Nicholas Walling, and Brett Hedekin who was actually acquired in a trade earlier this season. They also had 21-year-old David Tanabe and the cousin of Chris Chelios, Nikos Teselios. Goaltending for the Canes was a bit of a struggle during the regular season. Archers Urbe who had been playing a lot of games over the last few years had a 20 19 and 11 record with a 2.54 goals against average and a 902 save percentage and three shutouts his goal saved above expected ranked 46 among 57 goaltenders with 20 plus games played so he wasn't doing the best at all in the league you could also probably pin it on the 77 games that he played the year prior so he was playing a lot of hockey and it probably eventually caught up to him a bit his backup was originally tom barrasso but he was dealt to toronto and carolina would upgrade him into kevin weeks who came in from tampa Bay for forwards Chris Dingman and Shane Willis. Weeks would play two games with great numbers including a 1.5 goals against average and a 927 save percentage. On the train front, the Canes were relatively active. As previously mentioned, they brought in Kevin Weeks from Tampa for enforcer Chris Dingman and forward Shane Willis. They also brought in Sean Hill from St. Louis for a fourth rounder and Stephen Hulko, but that wasn't it. The Canes also made a five-player trade with the Florida Panthers in January 2002. They would send gritty forward Byron Ritchie alongside two-way defenseman Sandus Oslunch to Florida for defensive center Kevin Adams, defensive defenseman Brett Hedekin, and prospect Thomas Malik, who was selected in the third round in 2001. And then the other deal which involved Tom Brasso was him heading to Toronto for a fourth rounder in the stack 2003 draft, but unfortunately for Carolina, they didn't make a good choice with that pick as they took goalie prospect Kevin Nastia. The games were a pretty middle of the pack team during the regular season as they scored 217 goals and allowed 217. That had them in 13th in goals for and 19th in goals against. However, despite their mid stats they would go 35 26 16 and 5 which had them 16th in the league but first place in a weak southeast division the highlight of the season to me would be on april 7th 2002 when ron francis would pick up his 1700th career point in a game against the atlanta thrashers there would be a goal assisted by the other two team point leaders sam kapanen and jeff o'neill the game ended in a 1-1 tie despite atlanta being the worst team in the league in the playoffs the hurricanes would go on a run that nobody really saw coming in round one they would take on the 41 28 9 and 4 new jersey devils who had just came off two straight Stanley Cup Finals appearances. The Devils, known for their defensive play, were 20th in goals for, but third in goals against. This series proved to be a goaltending duel. Carolina would take the first two games 2-1. New Jersey would respond with two wins, outscoring Carolina 7-1. Carolina would respond taking Game 5 in OT before closing out the Devils 1-0 in Game 6 to knock out Martin Brodeur in his troops. The Canes had to rely on both Urbe and Weeks to get themselves to the second round. In Round 2, Carolina would run into another team who had just pulled off an upset, that being the Montreal Canadiens who just eliminated the higher seeded Boston Bruins. This series was more offensive than the first round. Carolina would take game one 2-0 before dropping two straight by a combined score of 6-2. Games would get a big OT win in game four due to a Nicholas Walling goal and then dominate the next two games 5-1 and 8-2 to close out Montreal in six games and advance to their first conference finals. The conference finals would see the Canes take on another Canadian team that being the Toronto Maple Leafs. The series would be very tight with five of the six games being only determined by one goal and three of them being 
15 OT games. Toronto would take game one before the Canes would take three straight off a pair of back-to-back -back OT wins in a 3-0 shutout. The Leafs would survive with a 1-0 game five win before game six, the guy who had a track record of series clinchers, Mark Tangelina, would end the Leafs season in game six OT, sending the Canes to an improbable cup final. So Mark Tangelina, known for his series clinching games, especially in the 2004 cup run, but he did also have one here against the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Canes would have an impossible task in the finals as they would take on the stacked Detroit Red Wings. Detroit had finished the season 51, 17, 10, and 4 with a presence trophy by 15 points. Carolina would continue their extra frame luck, taking game 1 3 2 in overtime off a game winning goal from Ron Francis. However, the experience and skill of Detroit would respond with a 3 1 win in game 2. Game 3 was a pivotal and long game, seeing the game go to triple overtime. Urbe would make 50 saves, but it would not be enough as Igor Larionov would give Detroit their first series lead. Detroit would build off that with the next two games, outscoring Carolina 6 1 and closing them out to win the Stanley Cup in five games. A playoff run for the ages that was cut just a tad short, one that would help with some of the experience for a couple players who would be a part of the team in 2006. The goal team and the effort of Urbe and Weeks gave Carolina the main push that postseason run as Urbe finished with a 1.67 goals against average, a 938 save percentage, and one shutout in 18 games. Meanwhile, Kevin Weeks had a 1.62 goals against average, a 939 save percentage, and two shutouts in only eight games. So both goaltenders complete played reverse of what they did during the regular season. I mean, Kevin Weeks was actually good during the regular season in his two games with Carolina, but Urbe definitely picked up his play a lot better than it was during the regular season. The Hurricanes wouldn't have a ton of selections in the 2002 draft. They would have four picks. Only one of those four picks made the NHL, that being the key piece to the 06 Cup win, Cam Ward, who was selected 25th overall. Considering Cam Ward was the best goalie from this draft class alongside the likes of Kari Lednan, I wouldn't really say there was a better choice out there for what they needed. Getting a predecessor for Urbe was a great choice. That only choice could have been better if they wanted to address defense and they could have taken Duncan Keith instead who went 54th overall to the Blackhawks. With their other three picks they could have taken somebody like Valtteri Filpula at 91 instead of Jesse Lane who never made the AHL or ECHL. Instead of goaltender Daniel Manzato and center Adam Taylor who they got in rounds fives and seven they could have went for guys like Dennis Weidman, Max Talbot, and Jonathan Erickson. Mind you they would have a lot more selections in early ones that following number of years leading up to their 06 cup win. 